Google and Qualcomm are going all in on Risk Five. Is it the end of ARM? Wow, you just you kind of jumped right in there, didn't you? I sorry, I was feeling it this morning. No, no, never be sorry, dude. Just 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 be you. No, here here's the deal. So I do need to just explain kind of what's going on. So uh, Qualcomm uh, made an announcement uh, with a supporting quote. Uh, from Google essentially saying they're going to build a wearable ecosystem based on uh, Risk Five. Uh, there were no device availability dates or anything other than the announcement. I don't think that means it's vaporware. In fact, I, it's very much real. Uh, Qualcomm has been part of the Risk Five uh, consortium for a while, and back in September they cranked out a a pretty big press release on. Uh, on their continued commitment. And, and, and quite frankly, I, again, almost everybody has risk five in some way, shape or form. AMD has controllers uh, and Nvidia does on their graphics cards. Uh, I believe that Qualcomm has uh, some on their uh, modems uh, or their RF. I'm, I'm not exactly sure uh, which one, but essentially I think if you don't know what Risk Five is, uh, each piece of software speaks a different language. Some speak x86, some speak ARM, some sp and and this new one called Risk Five. Right in the past, there were there were architectures called uh, MIPS. Uh, you have a different uh, instruction set architecture for the Power Platform at IBM, uh, as well as their Z mainframe as well. So a lot of different uh, instruction sets, but. Uh, I think the big big question I had is, and the question I would get is, hey, hey, what does this mean, right? Uh, the Qualcomm Wear ecosystem isn't isn't huge, right? Apple dominates in 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 wearables, and there are some low end vendors who supply a lot of the Chinese. So, um, you know, what does it mean, and, and and why should we care? Well, there is a distinct potential that if Google and Qualcomm successfully pull this off in the market that this could lead to a risk five smartphone okay and we're looking you know at a at a 1.4 billion unit market that today is 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 a really a hundred percent dominated by uh by arm and uh, it is a heavy turn but but let's look at some previous heavy turns right uh heck intel used to do smartphones and they had uh, an award-winning uh award-winning smartphones that that they powered and what they did is they did uh instruction set um translation in the cloud when you would actually download the application and you're like well how does it work like that and why doesn't it work like that uh, in in apple well um the oldest modern smartphone app uh, is probably five to six years old Right, that, that runs on Android or iOS, and they use uh, uh, IDEs, and they use very kind of high-level abstracted tools. Uh, you know, maybe with a section of games. So even Intel was running uh, Android applications that were initially written uh, for ARM. They were auto-translated uh, in in the Android uh, App Store. So another example is Apple, right, and what they did going from Intel to ARM. And one of the uh, one of the keys there was backward compatibility and the ability for that chip to run x86 uh, instructions until it wasn't pretty. But when you're bringing that much performance, probably a 40 percent uh, performance per watt boost over over x86, you can get away with maybe 10 percent overhead of, of doing that. And the final example I'll use is ARM in the data center, right? Where you'll, you'll have applications that could be 20 years old. Uh, it took ARM uh, a little over 10 years uh, to move that, right? You had to do the OS. Uh, you had to do uh, middleware. You had to do application um, um, application layer, right? But, it, but in about 10 years, now, now we have AWS uh, doing a full up uh, Graviton for their entire data center. Uh, we have Ampere One uh, running the entire NetSuite um, layer uh, for uh, for Oracle. So yeah, this is possible. Now, how difficult is this going to be? It 
doing smartphones. It would be more difficult than a wearable, less difficult for a PC uh, and the data center. Probably take about five years. That's just a an educated guess uh, to get this right. And the, the long pull is always games, okay? Uh, where they are doing some, you know, deep instruction uh, level uh, work. So, first of all, am I in? Second you're, of you're all, in, baby. I'm in. Second of all, um, you know, you have to wonder where it's at in terms of the things that aren't being announced. And so we know that it's been several months now since ARM brought its uh, its lawsuit to Qualcomm. And we know that with that, Qualcomm not only is, well, you know, arguably the world's largest law firm, kind of joking, but kind of serious, um, successfully defended an onslaught of attacks from basically every um, FTC in the world and Apple <laughs> all at one time. Um, and, you know, with that, I think Qualcomm certainly is going to be thinking very significantly about hedging its strategy long term. And of course, Pat, I think you made some really good arguments about where that will start and directionally where that might go. It's going to start with simpler um, devices where risk architecture is less risk potentially to be able to, to develop around. And over time, you will likely see it expound itself into other areas, expand itself into other areas. Um, as you suggested, Pat, I think, uh, like you said, I think there's lots of companies exploring risk right now uh, and the possibilities. And as ARM uh, continues to grow, change the way it licenses, change the way it charges to make sure that it's meeting uh, the, the demands of its shareholders, that could open up doors for open source, that could open up doors for risk five. Uh, remember, ARM is a risk architecture. So, it, you know, it started there and, of course, um, it, you know, found its way to disrupt Intel and others taking significant market, not the majority, but significant. And over time, you'll expect new architectures to find their way into the market like this. So, you know, where does it head from here, Pat? I think, um, you know, there's probably work being done in those more advanced devices that you mentioned around risk. But I do think it's early days. I think your estimate of five years is probably pretty uh, close into the ballpark of where it might be. But I do think it's coming. I do think, I'd say on the record, I think uh, these companies are going to hedge. They're not going to let themselves get uh, into a situation where they can be controlled by a licensing agreement if they don't have to be. Uh, and, you know, we've seen it happen to every company that has substantial licensing that over time, they want to have more control of vertical integration. They want to have more control over margin and pricing. And if risk offers that opportunity, risk five offers that opportunity, um, I could see it going more in that direction. So uh, you hit the news itself. Um, I'm just kind of philosophizing on what's going to happen with risk five. But I think uh, you made some really good assessments there. And uh, those additional comments are mine.